So welcome everyone to this afternoon's um, HVG Coffee Afternoon. Um, we're joined by Dr. Bruce um, Davenport, who's Lecturer and Research Associate for Media, Culture and Heritage at Newcastle University. Uh, so a huge thank you to Bruce for joining us this afternoon. So we're going to be focusing on what we do when volunteers can no longer volunteer with us. Um, a difficult subject, and, but one I think we'll all have encountered as, as volunteer management professionals. So hopefully we'll get a lot out of this afternoon's session. We're going to be recording the first part of the session. So please keep yourselves on mute if you can. And then we're going to break out into smaller groups to discuss the topic and think about our own working strategies for how we might deal uh, with these kinds of situations. So once again, a huge thank you to, to Bruce for joining us today. I'm gonna to hand over to you uh, to uh, lead the session. If anyone does have any questions, comments or reflections throughout the session, please do drop them in the uh, chat box at the bottom of your screen. And Will and I will um, be responding to those as we go through the session. So thank you, Will, for your help. Uh, Bruce, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. Uh, so as as I said, my name is Bruce. Um, there we go. So, can you see the PowerPoint screen? Yeah, excellent. Um, okay, there we go. So, the project, the, the, the talk, and the project were about cessation of volunteering due to age related issues and looking at it both from, as from the personal experience of the uh, volunteers and as a management challenge for, <clears throat> well, the volunteer coordinators such as yourselves. Um, this started a f quite a few years ago. I was working on another project uh, called Dementia and Imagination, which is about the role of visual arts for old people with dementia. And <clears throat> I was analyzing the interview data and I came across this quote. Sorry, I'll read it out. Um, well, there's another thing as well. Um, I'm a member of British Conservation Organization. Uh, and until three days ago, um, I've been with them for five or six years. And um, I used to go, I used to go every Sunday to, to act as a room, room guide there. And I literally packed up last weekend. So I, I can't go there anymore. So I have to find something else to do on a Sunday Sunday now. The thing was, amongst other things, um, the, the, the gentleman in question said this 13 times in a single interview. <clears throat> and if you, some of the guidelines for working with people with dementia uh, suggest that if, if somebody with dementia is repeating something over and over again, then it's an indicator of an uh, underlying tension or unresolved anxiety. Um, so th this strongly suggested that, um, that this gentleman um, was really upset. Basically, he's been asked to stop or told he couldn't go back anymore. Um, and we heard through sort of informal conversation that basically the, the organization had basically told him he couldn't come anymore because he had dementia and he couldn't be a volunteer. Um, and I was doing that and it struck me that actually I'd, I'd never heard anyone talk about this. And there's lots said about uh, volunteering and how it's really good for people and all those sorts of things. But I don't recall anyone um, actually talking about this moment and the impact that this moment might have on people and looking at it it made me think that maybe well does that moment have a longer term impact after the volunteers ended volunteering has ended so i thought well maybe that's a question that's worth asking um i was able to get some internal funding to do a pilot study so it was only a small study um, and we did semi-structured interviews focusing on the volunteers experiences and managers experiences um, i worked with three cultural her heritage organizations in the northeast of england really small local heritage center a large independent and a national multi-site organization and we work with two sites in that organization and the regional office and Eventually, I ended up interviewing, as you can see, seven volunteer managers, five current volunteers, two ex-volunteers, and then seven volunteers with experience of withdrawal. 
And that was a bit of an unanticipated aspect of the volunteer experience um, that people might stop for a while and then return. Um, but oftentimes those people who stopped didn't know whether they were going to be able to come back or not. So, uh, and in some cases they did come back and in some cases we heard accounts of people who wanted to come back but were never able to do so. Um, so we thought that their experience was actually really uh, valid and useful and helpful for us in thinking about this overall topic. So for folks on the volunteers to start off with, um, we asked them about what they gained from uh, volunteering and we, we didn't we tried to avoid any, we didn't talk about well-being or anything, we just asked them about what they gained from it, what impact it had, those sorts of terms. Uh, and these on, on the left, you've got this column of impact of volunteering. Um, and those are the sorts of things they talked about. They talked about how it made them feel. They talked about giving back, helping and sharing, um, which I'm going to come back to is if we talk about reciprocity, come back to that later. Um, they talked about friendship or social relationships, uh, the learning they did. Some of them talked about negative impacts of volunteering as well, um, particularly if they were spent, one person had to do a lot of standing, and got quite sore feet, things like that. And they talked about respite. Uh, now, all of the others sort of crop up in the literature. Respite was a new, uh, occurred in, has occurred in a couple of projects, but it's not something that's discussed much in the literature. And that was uh, the volunteers basically saying that the, um, the volunteering gave them a break from their partners and gave their partners a break from them. Um, and um so that was that was interesting so when we asked them about how they anticipated stopping then they uh they talked about uh, the negative feelings they talked about the loss of benefits which is all those things they just you know we talked about that they gained they talked about losing that but then they introduced a set of other things so they talked they related the question to their wider context they started to think about why they would stop and how that would fit in their lives and so on which is really interesting they also talked about this, these three things, resisting stopping. So they might lie uh, about their health condition. Uh, so no one would ask them to stop. Um, they talked about, some talked about, they hoped they would be self-aware enough to know that they could stop or should change their volunteering. And some people talked about, one person in particular talked about ending gradually. Um, and we sort of grouped those as talking about forms of personal agency, taking an active role in the situation uh, to sort of, you know, change the situation, albeit not all of those active roles are ones you might want from a management perspective. Um, and then we had one person in particular who said, no, I do it to suit me. If it doesn't suit me, I'll stop. And that there, um, what you what we might call a negative case. They're, the, they're the, the one person who stands out from all the others and says, actually, no, it wouldn't be a problem. I'd just stop. And that's really useful to hear that because not everyone will find this problematic. Um, and this one person points to that broader, broader group of people who you could say, well, probably won't find it problematic. Now, we know um, from sort of psychological literature that uh, people are absolutely rubbish about predicting the future. It's one of the great things about human beings. They over-predict how simple things will be and under-predict how um, difficult things will be. Um, so unless you uh, score highly for um, being sort of having depressive traits, people who tend to be depressive also tend to be much better at predicting the future. Bit of a digression. Um, so we can compare the, what people said about anticipating stopping to those people who had experienced stopping, um, either temporarily or had left entirely. And the ones in brown you can see are the ones where they overlap. So people talked about the negative emotions and the loss of benefits and so on. Um, the personal agency crops up either through the resisting stopping or ending gradually, but also particularly in one case through achieving closure. Basically their volunteering was a, like a coherent project and they finished their project and they closed it down and that gave them a clear end point for their volunteering. And then there's a whole range of other bits 
that are in there about people deciding to stop, about feelings of letting people down, that they couldn't go back to the volunteering, that that was letting other people down. Um, they talked about in terms of second retirement, and there's some really interesting analogies between leaving volunteering and retirement, particularly now that uh, there's no fixed um, retirement age. Um, they said that, um, you know, this was something that was thrust on us. And one person talked about how they got out of the habit of volunteering. So that then affected their volunteering, their decision to leave. So there's, there's a whole range of things going on in there. Um, and I'll come back to that in a moment, but let's go on then to the managers. So I asked the managers a whole range of questions um, about their volunteering. Excuse me, Warren. And so there were a sequence of themes in what they said. One of the themes was about policies and values. The policies and values of the organization uh, created frameworks within which they could operate. And that provided them with support and with confidence to do their work. But it also left space for them. <laughs> um, They talked about the relationships between staff and volunteers <clears throat> and balancing uh, closeness with professionalism. And then, um, and ha having to have the right level of that. They also talked about what I called organizational reciprocity. What I mean about this is that there was a sense that particularly with long-term volunteers the managers felt that because the volunteer had given so much to the organization <clears throat> that then they felt sort of almost morally bound to support them so and that then led on to this experience of going beyond the bounds what i call going beyond the bounds which is going beyond what the rules and frameworks actually require to support people in their volunteering which was fine but then came up then what that meant was that the volunteer managers encountered uh, limits to how far they could go and because this aspect of volunteering hadn't really been discussed much those limits were not predefined by the policies and values but they were encountered on an ad hoc basis and rationalized for each individual person, which was a very understandable, but it had um, an emotional impact on the staff in terms of sort of the, they felt, you know, in some cases people talked about feeling drained or they were encountered feeling bad because they were getting to this limit, but they didn't know how to talk about that. And there's all sorts of things around there that were sort of negative emotional impacts for staff. So um, what we came to was that leaving volunteering in late, late life is more or less inevitable and that the participants anticipate or experience leaving volunteering as a form of loss, or the majority did. Clearly the one case person didn't. So our negative case is still important. That has the potential for further longer term impacts, but we weren't able to explore that. There are possibilities, nonetheless, for personal agency amongst all those volunteers to ameliorate those impacts. So they take control of it, and in taking control, they reduce that sense of loss. Um, the policies and relationships create space for freedom to act, potentially in ways that support that for agency. <laughs> Staff go beyond what's required to support volunteers, but the limits of that are not very well defined and probably because they're not discussed and that situation has impacts on the staff um, but it seems possible that organizations and volunteers might benefit if those processes and limits are articulated so that was what we found um, albeit only in a study of three organizations but <laughs> sorry. thank you bruce um I'll just give you a moment there. Thank you for, for struggling through. It's always so difficult when you're 
you're speaking and, and you're having a moment but that was absolutely fascinating and so much wealth of information um i'm i'm sure everyone will agree and the the chat has been active with people thinking about their own situations and um thinking about some of the situations that they <laughs>